Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. I'm joined with the amazing YouTuber Fur Cheryl. Check out his channel. I'm going to link it here in the description. It's going to be everywhere. Be easy to find. Please check it out. Um, mashallah, this brother has amazing, amazing stories, amazing videos. He interviews lots of converts on there as well. So please check out his channel. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Hi everyone. I'm Harold from Singapore. As uh, our sister here has mentioned, uh, my channel is Shah Harold, uh, S-H-A-H-E-R-A-L-D. You can check it out on YouTube. Yes, and uh, I do uh, cover some revert stories as well as I get some content from my Ustad in Singapore who, who shares about Islam. So inshallah, we hope that uh, this work, you know, da'wah that we are doing may bring more people to see the beauty of Islam. Yeah. Inshallah, inshallah, brother. Inshallah. Okay, so first question. Were you religious before you became Muslim? Did you have any religion? Did you believe in God? Uh, yes, I was baptized a Catholic when I was a baby. Um, I went for catechism classes up until I was like 18 years old. Um, I took my first Holy Communion and also the, what do you call that? The confirmation, yeah. So I did, I did all that. Um, and... Somewhere along the way, I I start I started to question a lot about what I really believe in because uh, I studied in Australia, I pursued my uh, bachelor's over there, and one of my elective was philosophy, and that's mm -hmm. where I came to question about the meaning of life, the purpose of why we're here. Um, but I became more like an atheist after learning philosophy. Um, and I was living like a YOLO life. <laughs> yeah. The YOLO life, I think, is so relatable to a lot of um, people who convert to Islam of just going through yeah. that phase in life of just saying YOLO. And looking back on it, like you only live one. It's such a stupid thing to say because you would only yeah. say it before you would do stupid things. You would do something really dumb and then just <laughs> be like, YOLO. <laughs> like, <it's> just... yeah. <laughs> you were studying philosophy. You were. Yeah. kind of you were interested in finding out why we're here you were taking your time to actually try and figure out you know why we were created why we're here so how did you discover islam what happened and what were your opinions about islam before you became muslim hmm. okay so when i was like an atheist i had this understanding about you know being the only conscious being uh, that is aware of my own reality and that I wanted to control my own destiny. Um, I studied some like really dark kind of philosophy, like Nietzsche, you know, or Foucault, you know, something like things that I started to think, you know, I'm like the only God around kind of thing. It's just mm -hmm. But so I was famous. like eh, in that in that, that mind where um, I thought that, you know, we're in a matrix and I'm the only one that's aware at the moment kind of <laughs> philosophy. Which is really dumb because, you know, people have their own thoughts, right? Which I can't control now to come to think of it. Yeah. But at that time, um, all I wanted to do was since I'm the only conscious being around the world, I just wanted to be happy. I wanted uh, people around me to be happy. I wanted to just create a positive life. So I tried to make myself happy, have fun all the time, bring friends around, you know, partying and stuff. But then my parents called me and said, you know, grandma passed away. That was when I realized that, you know, I can't control death. And there has to be someone more powerful than I am who decides who dies and who lives. And, um, and the time for them to die. Right? So before I leave for my studies in Australia, I actually spoke to my grandma. She's actually bedridden at the time. She couldn't really speak much. It's a bit, um, she, she was incomprehensible. So I was just by her bedside and I was like, you know, asking God, I was saying, you know, maybe she's going to go when I'm in Australia. So I hope that if, you know, when, if she, before you take her life, at least allow me to say goodbye, you know, but um, I think that would not happen. <laughs> And I was, I was like, beside her, I was crying. It was Chinese New Year. So it was taboo to, to speak about death, you know, during Chinese New Year. And when I was in Australia, when my parents called me, I, I started to cry. I was, you know, in a lecture halfway, but I had to leave the hall just to, to answer the phone. And I took the first flight back 
to Singapore and attended the funeral. And it's those Chinese funeral where you have, you know, um, temple monks coming and they start praying and stuff. Um, but then it started to open my eyes a lot. You know, people are sad around me, but I can't make them happy. I can't control death. And there has to be a supreme being somewhere. And I became agnostic from, from an atheist to an agnostic then. <laughs> and I thought, okay, uh, I didn't want religion to tell me who God was um, because religion, I thought at the time, was man-made, something that society created to control uh, us, to make us, you know, be obedient people that would just listen, you know. Um, until I met a colleague of mine in my first job when I came back to Singapore after graduating. She, she's a Malay and she's a Muslim. Um, we started to develop feelings for each other and I upright, I told her, you know, we can't be together because I'm, I'm a YOLO and, you know, you're a Muslim. <laughs> I enjoy partying and making myself happy and, you know, just living a day at a time. And she said, why don't you give Islam a chance? Go find out more about it and come back again you know, to tell me if you change your mind. So I said, okay, uh, I'm going to ask all my questions, philosophical questions even to the, the Ustad there. And if he can't answer my questions or make any sense to me, I would just not follow this religion. So I just went to, to the convert center in Singapore and that's the start of my discovery of Islam. Yeah. Wow. That is, <laughs> can I can I ask what kind of yeah. questions you asked the Ustad? Um, I asked I asked three questions. I asked the first question I asked was it was like more like a challenge. Why why do you believe in one God? Why not two, three, or four or five? You know, who who made this idea that you have to choose one? And and he said, Well, it's quite simple and logical because just let's just say you have a God that created the human head, a God that created hands and legs. Now, which God would say, I made the perfect human body? The God of the head would say, I'm better because the man has intellect, he has ideas, I created him with such beautiful you know, elements in him. Um, the God of the hands would say, I'm better because man can feed himself with his hands and start to build things. Legs would say that um, I take him to faraway places and so they will start, the idea is that they will start competing with each other and they will have disagreements and who will be the best God to create a human being. And from that analogy, he helped me understand that, you know, why do we have so many different gods? What about one ever uh, all-powerful God that, you know, created all things? And uh, that, was, that wasn't so convincing yet for me until I, he said, um, just imagine... You have a, a monitor and a mouse and a whole computer system, right? But you still need a source of power to start all of them up. So the concept of a one God and Tawheed was, uh, was explained to me in that manner. And then it made a lot of sense. I started to believe, yeah, I mean, like, what was the purpose of having so many gods? I mean, you know, it's so hard to control the God of the stars if you are a God of the moon, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so then that made a lot of sense and 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 i asked him the second question why do you say uh allah is is god not jesus or buddha or anyone else who who decides allah should be the god and he said well in arabic the word allah although it's the name of of the god he's also in a literal sense it's the unique one and only god and that made a lot of um, so I understood that as the God, um, because I think he wanted to give me a very basic understanding of the name of Allah, uh, given that I'm a new, you know, revert or a new non-Muslim who's coming in here. So he said, um, but if you say Jesus is God, because he understood that I was a Christian before, he said, if Jesus was God, um, how can he die on the cross? Because the understanding, the definition of divinity in the dictionary would say that, you know, God is immortal, he can't die. Um, and, but Jesus died on the cross for, for our sins. And then he went on to say that um, as Christians, you believe that uh, Jesus died for your sins in order for God to forgive you uh, for all the past sins that you have uh, committed, even the sins of Adam. 
Um, but uh, can God forgive you just when you ask Him for forgiveness? Can does He need to sacrifice an innocent being just to forgive you? And and that made a lot of sense because if you believe in an all merciful and all powerful God, you wouldn't need even to sacrifice anyone in order to attain forgiveness. And I believe a God that you know would just forgive you is a lot more merciful. I mean, you can tell your parents, like, to tell your mom, mom, I'm sorry for, you know, breaking the glass or something. And she said, it's okay, you know. What more God and ever, you know, all merciful God, why can't he forgive you when you ask for forgiveness? Mm -hmm. And that's, it should be simple like that. So it made a lot of sense that Jesus was not God. And I asked him, what about Buddha? He said, Buddha, uh, it's, you know, even in the Buddhist teaching, uh, it's all about a way of life, how one should live life harmoniously with everyone around him, how one should not do the wrong things because there's karma. And then the idea of reincarnation, which also does not really sit well with me because, you know, the world population is always increasing, right? Mm. <laughs> but reincarnation, the understanding of reincarnation is um, you go back to wherever that is and you come back again. So if the population was 5 million for example, you know, the world population will always be at 5 million, but where the extra 3 million comes from. <laughs> so the, the concept of reincarnation um, don't really make sense for me, at least. And, um, and so, yeah, he, he answered my question for, for the second one. The last one I asked him, so what do Muslims believe? And he said, they just believe in one God, creator of the heavens and the earth. Um, and the eternal and the absolute he neither begets nor is begotten and nothing can be compared to him so he actually gave me you know, surah ikhlas in english <laughs> uh, and and that that like wow strike a chord in my heart because that's what i actually believe in from the start like the all supreme being you know nothing can be compared and that not made a lot of sense because if you you know even in philosophy we understand about uh, our five different senses, which are all limited. You know, we can only see a certain range, a spectrum. Um, but how can we measure a universe which is infinite? So you can't use a ruler to measure the universe. Uh, how can we use our senses to measure God? And, and from that understanding, you know, God can't be a man because it would just be a fraction of who he really is. And we can believe in the wind, which we don't really see. Mm -hmm. uh, why do why does God need to be a physical form in order for us to believe? And it would be more powerful actually for a person to believe without seeing. Um, that would actually be the highest form of uh, submission, you know, to believe in something you don't really see. Yeah. So that yeah. that made a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, there's a lot of things that we believe in that we don't see that we don't really like. I've never seen my brain. But mm -hmm. I believe that there's a brain there, inshallah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's yeah. like there's so many things that we just don't see that we just believe. So why would we not believe in a creator? It's, it's really interesting what you were saying. But from that initial conversation, how long did it take for you to become Muslim? I think about a year after that. Mashallah. Um, I went for a lot of the uh, basic knowledge of Islam we studied about the prophets. So I had a lot of questions about prophets because uh, coming from a Christian background, you know, I was always inspired by the stories of the prophets because of Moses, Jesus, and all. And I know Jesus is like, the, you know, like everybody knows he's a loving person mm -hmm. at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he's a peaceful, loving person. And how do Muslims reconcile with that? And I came to build, you know, this understanding, this knowledge that, Jesus is also a prophet and Muslims love Jesus. And so from there, I, I say, yeah, that's great, man. <laughs> if Muslims love Jesus and I love Jesus, you know, that, that kind of aligns with everything. Yeah, we just don't see him as God. And that's, that's good enough for me. Yeah, so um, it was not until um, I saw, you know, my girlfriend was attending all these classes with me and I didn't want to waste her time because... <laughs> because she was so nice and such a nice person and she was always kind and helpful and stuff and i thought you know if this girl is here waiting for me to give her an answer i should i should really look deeper into my heart and see if i really want to embrace islam mm. um 
And so I said, okay, out of all the things that a Muslim do, like praying five times a day, fasting during the month of Ramadan, I felt that fasting was the hardest because I've never fasted before, coming from a non-Muslim life, right? And uh, so I said, okay, Ramadan's around the corner, let's give it a shot and I'll just fast. And so I, I fasted and Alhamdulillah, I was amazed that I could do the 30 days of fasting. And it was somewhere around the last week of the Ramadan where I had a dream. I dreamt one night that I was walking down a hallway and a guy was sitting in the hallway on a couch and he was just very welcoming, very inviting. And there's this presence of, you know, uh, happiness and joy to come closer to him. So I went closer to him and he just smiled at me and he said, there was a pause and there was like total peace and silence when I was near him. And then he just smiled and he said, brother, when would you want to be part of the family? And wow. I just woke up. It was just one sentence like that. And I thought maybe I've been you know, studying too much about Islam. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, maybe it's like you know, studying about prophets and Islam. Maybe mm. this dream happened because of that. So I ignored it. I thought it was just a coincidence. And on the same day, my friend, who's the Muslim, asked me out for dinner. And we had dinner and he said, Brother, I saw you going to you know, the convert center, studying about Islam. When are you going to be a Muslim? So I thought, oh, maybe this is still a coincidence. You know, Maybe God sent him to just ask me this question at a time. And so I, I went back home and you know, mashallah, I had the same dream again. So it was a recurring dream. And I said, no, this time it can't be a coincidence. Maybe God really want me to, to you know, come, come to a decision now. So I said, okay, I'm going to, you know, quote unquote, test God, um, challenge Him. Yeah. And uh, I, it was very arrogant of me, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I just, you know, I'm, I, I, I believe that, you know, He's the creator of all things. So He can do anything change your heart if you are true to yourself like if you're sincere about finding out the truth he can show it to you and uh, so I, I just sat on my bed one morning after the dream woke up and I took the Bible and the Quran and I said okay I'm going to say a prayer and ask God for help and and I started to say a prayer I said dear God please guide me I'm I know you exist I know you're the all-powerful and you are able to do anything in this world. And I know what I'm doing now is very arrogant of me to test you. And I hope that you can forgive me for this, but I really need a sign from you. Like I'm going to flip this Quran and the Bible three times randomly. And whichever verse that my eyes set upon, it should be very clear, crystal clear, you know, that this is the way or this is, you know, who we should follow God this is God or something and um, so I gave the, the Bible the first go because they, okay I was a Christian first so let's start the Bible and I flipped three times and all three times I did not get an answer uh, why because even now I don't memorize the Bible because it's so hard to memorize the Bible right so if you ask me what were the verses I can't remember them but all I can recall is that they were not complete because you need to kind of read a full story to get mm -hmm. a full picture of what it's saying. And also, the Bible is made of many testimonies. One can interpret the same Bible in many ways. And maybe some verses that I saw there were not in other Bibles. So the, because of the different versions of Bible, you do not get a complete picture of uh, who or what it's telling you. And so therefore, I, I, I didn't get an answer. It wasn't straightforward. So I closed the Bible and said, okay, I'm going to give the Quran a chance now. And, and that's when I closed my eyes and opened up the book. And the first thing that I saw was Surah Al-Hajj. Uh, I can't remember the number now, but I remember exactly what it says. So it's basically in English, it's war to the disbelievers, for this is the truth from your Lord. And indeed, um, Allah is the God of those you know, who, who believe. And... So in, in, in Arabic, it would be uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim 
Yeah, so it was like, and their hearts humbly submit to it, and indeed Allah is the guide of those who believe to the straight path. So I was like, okay, maybe this is still a coincidence. <laughs> so I, I, I was too stubborn, you know, I wanted to still test, um, <laughs> test God. <laughs> so uh, I said, okay, I'm going to give myself another try. I closed the book again. And um, I, I closed my eyes and randomly opened up another page. And this time I was brought to uh, Surah Fusilat. And I think if I'm not wrong, it's chapter 53, verse 50, 40 something. Yeah. But I, I know exactly what it says again. So, um, yeah. So how did I know this is because I, I read the English one. Okay. And then because it made it made such an impact on me, I wrote it down. Mashallah. I, I wrote it down. So... I kind of like got the gist of it, right? I wrote it down and I went back to it and it, I told myself in the future, I'm just going to remember these verses in, in Arabic. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how I, I got to memorize it. Yeah, so, and this time I was brought to Fusilat and it says, um, and we will show them our signs in the horizon and within themselves and, and their hearts will humbly submit to it and indeed Allah is the God of those to the straight path. That's the English version of it, and and in Arabic it goes Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyan lahum anahul haqqa. Awalam yakfi bi Rabbika anahu ala kulli shay'in. Shaheed. Yeah, so indeed, Allah said, you know, am I not a witness enough for you to see that you know around you everything that I've created, that I exist, and you know, so that that kind of sealed the, the whole thing. And so I, I I closed the book and I was kind of trembling in awe and tears inside my heart because it's like asking. God and He answered you through those verses, and uh, so I immediately humbled myself and said, "Oh dear God, I'm so sorry for testing you. Thank you so much for, you know, guiding me." And uh, as mentioned, you know, I previously said I promised that I'll follow you, and therefore I'm here to submit myself and to 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 believe in Islam. So that's how I I called the, the convert center and asked them how to take my shahada how to how to be a muslim and they said yeah we will arrange the day and you can come down to officially do it and so after a month we we got to the convert center and alhamdulillah my parents also were there um yeah it's quite strange <laughs> yeah i also prayed i also prayed for that um for my parents to come um and to accept me as a muslim um and and alhamdulillah allah answered those prayers so they came and even my girlfriend, she came. So I, I, I called her um, before this shahada. I called her and I said, you know, something happened. I dreamt and I, I asked God for an answer and guidance, and He gave me. So I'm ready to be a Muslim. So after I told her that, she, she kind of like broke into tears and was so happy. And she said, um, you know how many nights I've been praying for you to be uh, receiving guidance. And um, Allah has answered my prayers. So, Alhamdulillah, she, she, her prayers were answered, and even mine at the same time. And and that's how I came to Islam. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And now Allah has put you on such an incredible path. Well, thank you so much for coming on my channel. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out and subscribed yet, go and subscribe. Go and check out his channel, inshallah. And um, I pray that Allah continues to bless you and your family and that things go well with your girlfriend or I maybe wife now, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, I'm married already, so she's, she's now like my wife. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Awesome. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Alhamdulillah.